Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today we're going to be playing Eldritch Horror. It feels good to say that. The last playthrough might not have been that long ago, but I filmed it way before that. And so I don't think I've played for about, probably about six months. So I'm very excited to be diving back in. And especially so since, yeah, I've not been very well lately. Lost my voice for a week and a bit. You might hear some scratchiness remain, but we'll just blame that on the Elder Gods. One big change, which you may have noticed, since the first couple of playthroughs, back then I had the base game and... Is it Forsaken Law, Forgotten Law? The first kind of mini expansion that it seems pretty universally agreed is essential. Or a very good first purchase. Out of all the expansions, get that one first. I'm just repeating knowledge. I bought the game secondhand with that in it. In the nine months since, I have expanded that collection. And slightly obsessive as I am, I've got it all. You just mix everything in. It works a lot better than you might expect just throwing all of these cards together. It does make frighteningly huge decks of cards to shuffle in terms of your assets and things, but I am using something. It won't appear on screen, but you can have a Google for the Eldritch Horror card clock, card clerk. Basically, you need to draw a card of a particular type. You press the button for the one that you need. It tells you which one you found, and I just have things like the item cards neatly obsessively ordered alphabetically in little card trays. It's my first time playing it like this though. The couple of times I have played with <laughs> all of the expansions turn all, all of a sudden, there was a lot of shuffling involved. But yeah, bits and pieces will appear from the various expansions. There's no extra board in this one. There are three, I think, extra sideboards across the various expansions. I might, next time I do a playthrough, include one of those. But as you can see, I've already zoomed out quite far. And uh, yeah, I'm, and I'm currently questioning how an extra board, probably the size of this space, would be incorporated and fit everything else in. Maybe zoom out a little bit more and have the characters at the bottom, but they get a million cards each. Never mind, that's a job for future time. And I've been rambling and not playing, haven't I? Before we jump in and introduce our investigators and the situation they find themselves in, I would recommend you turn on your Klingon subtitles. Any mistakes I make will hopefully be corrected there. Thanks, Steve. If you do spot any that aren't in there, there are a million cards and combinations and things going on now, and I made enough mistakes when I was just playing with the base game. Please let us know in the comments and put a timestamp on if possible so we can find it. And if you'd like to help support the channel, there are links to Patreon and Ko-fi in the description, patreon.com slash drips. Your support will be massively appreciated and is how I'm able to do this at all. So first of all, I think let's have a look at our investigators. And you might notice as well, hey, where's the standees? You got minis for everything. Yeah, that's another thing that I obsessively did. It was my excuse for buying Mansions of Badness, which I have subsequently Played quite a bit, actually. Really enjoyed. I liked it when it first came out, but hey, it had no expansions. I got a bit bored of it. Now it's got tons. But hey, you can have minis for a load of the investigators, and then you can go on Etsy and buy minis for all of the others. So we have Sister Mary, the nun. For an action, she can test her will and help investigators lose madness conditions. She's got five health, seven sanity, and her kind of standout stat is will at four. She starts in South Africa, has some holy water, a ship ticket, and a clue. Sister Mary speaks very little of her life before taking her vows. Like so many other young girls, she came from a small town and dreamed of something greater than a small life. The Lord provided. Through his path, she has become a lion of compassion and virtue. She has a natural humility, and people are often surprised how driven she is to serve God's will. The church has sent her to South Africa to investigate a possibly demonic presence. Mary plans to approach the question as she always does, with a clear mind and unshaken and an unshakable faith. Something else that I'm particularly excited about, something I really like in Arkham Horror 2nd Edition, uh, this is the Masks of Nyarlathep, Nyarlathotep expansion. It added, amongst more things, it added personal stories. So little extra narrative things, little missions that our characters can start to go on and get rewards if they fulfill them, consequences if they don't. So I am playing with those this time. So Sister Mary, he is my shepherd. Your faith is with you always. All that has been and all that will be has been preordained. You are an instrument of God, and by his will you will cause his work to be done. The darkness that threatens the earth is simply a test, one that you do not intend to fail. When a mystery is solved, discard this card and gain the fear no evil reward. If you would gain a bane condition, discard this card and gain the faith-shaken consequence instead. I won't show you what those are yet, but yeah, solve a mystery before she gains a bane. Over in Tokyo, we have Dexter Drake the magician. As an action, he can move a monster from his space to another space containing a gate. When he gains spells, he gets more spells. He also has five health and seven sanity, and his standout stat is law, 
which makes sense because generally that's what you'll want when casting spells. He starts with a binding spell and an arcane assistant. When the Great War ended, Dexter went from being a soldier to a stage magician. His charm and unparalleled skills quickly drew praise from around the world. As he toured the exotic corners of the world, he amassed a collection of genuine occult knowledge. Soon Drake became as much a master of real magic as he is of stage delusions. Eventually, his arcane studies revealed a dark power that is growing in strength. Now in Tokyo, Drake spends his nights performing and his days stopping the end of the world. Dexter's story, The Great Drake. Your power is vast, but there is more to be had. You know that you can push yourself further. You just hope that you can do it without going too far. When you pass a lore check as part of a spell effect, place an Eldritch token on this card. Then if there are six or more tokens on this card, discard it and gain the Sorcerer Supreme reward. At the end of the encounter phase, if there are five or more open gates, on the game board, discard the card and gain the Delve Too Deep consequence. In San Francisco, we have Daniela Reyes, the mechanic. As an action, she can spend any number of resources, which are a new thing we'll get into, to gain an equal number of clues. Once per round, after you perform an Acquire Assets action or a Rest action, you may gain a resource. So fantastic, she can turn resources into clues and has ways of getting free resources. She has seven health, five sanity, and she does not have any standout stat, but they're actually kind of evened out a bit more. She has threes for everything except observation, which she only has one for. She doesn't start out with any items at all, but she is headstrong. She has a clue and a resource. Daniela has never been one to sweat the small stuff. Everything that seems big today will be small tomorrow. And it's the little things in life, fast cars, pretty girls, and home cooked meals that make it worth living anyway. But that was before. One night, a strange noise prompted her to leave a glass of water behind a door to catch evil spirits, like her mama always said. A glass of water that, in the morning, she found shattered into a thousand pieces. Something is going on, and she is going to find out what. And Daniela's story, the shape of things. Even the smallest force, properly applied, can change the world. You fix things. It is what you do. Now it is time to fix things on a much larger scale. When you spend a resource, place a resource on this card. Then if there are eight resources on the card, discard it and gain the resourceful reward. At the end of the encounter phase, if there are ten or more monsters on the board, discard this card and gain the superstitious consequence. And we have, and finally, Tony Morgan, the bounty hunter. As an action, he can test his influence and spend focus to get clues. When he defeats monsters, he gains focus. He has seven health and five sanity and his standout is Observation. His first stop is in Bogota to check Colombian fields. He starts out with just a pair of handcuffs and a belly full of dreams. Tony's tracked down low-life scum in every lousy corner of the world, but nothing was quite as bad as Innsmouth. Some creep in Boston skipped bail and tried to hide with family in the small fishing village. It turned out family meant vicious fish-like monstrosities that left Tony bloody and half-drowned. Ever since, he's found a new kind of dirtbag to hunt. Ordinary mobster or otherworldly monster, Tony will take it down and find someone willing to pay him for it. Now he's got a lead in Bogota. Easy money. Or is it Bogota? I'll pronounce it, I'll rush pronounce it. And Tony's story, Thrill of the Hunt. You check and recheck your guns, making certain that all is ready. These marks are going to be tough, they usually are, but you can handle it. It is what you do. When you defeat a non-epic monster during combat, place the monster on this card. Then, if there are five or more monsters on the card, discard it and gain the Trophy Hunter reward. When you have only one health or one sanity, discard the card and gain the Blacklisted consequence. So some things that have happened. We have a prelude card that various expansions have included so before you do any setup you can randomly find a prelude card or you can choose one if you would prefer these give us a bit of extra story will change the rules of our game might tell us to introduce a sideboard which also some old ones will do as well so yeah you can have some really interesting combinations with all of the various possibilities that are in the game at this point completed point. I've randomly picked the stars align during step five of setup. So this has told us to introduce the mystic ruins encounter deck. So we've got the active expedition that's normally in the game. We now have a mystic ruins deck. It works much the same. You shuffle it. The back of the card on top will have a picture of a place. So we have an active expedition in Tunguska and we have a mystic ruins encounter that's offered in London. If antediluvium is the ancient one and yeah, I've chosen Antediluvian to be the ancient one, just for this to fit in story-wise. I'm not sure, really, if, like, it seems to have made the game harder, 
but it does give us a bit of respite as well. So basically what, what happens is we put additional sanity on antediluvium, and you'll see in a minute why that's a bad thing. But if antediluvium was not the ancient one, we would kind of do a couple of things to set up that antediluvium does. After resolving setup, each investigator may gain a madness condition to gain a spell and a clue. Oh, they haven't all been given their clues yet, but as you may have noticed from the extra cards that they have, they've all chosen to do that. Partly because Sister Mary's ability, if you remember, she can spend an action and the number of successes she gets are the number of investigators that can discard madness conditions from any space. So it seems perfect that she's in this. I did just choose the investigators randomly as well. I just made sure that they weren't from the base game or the first expansion, so we would be seeing new people. So system. So thanks to the stars aligning, Sister Mary has healing words, but it has caused hallucinations. Dexter Drake, I'm not sure which one was extra. He's got binding and mind's eye. He started with one of them, uh, but he is feeling despair. Daniela can cast Storm of Spirits. Helps her with combat checks, uh, but is feeling some intense hunger. And Tony Morgan knows the mists of Rella, which can let him ignore monsters on a space to do an encounter, but it has caused some amnesia. Hopefully, though, Sister Mary will be getting rid of those. So we've all chosen to get extra things, partly because of the starting mystery as well, which we'll see in a sec. And Antediluvium is the ancient one, so we don't need the bottom bit. Speaking of Antediluvium, let's have a look. I will pop them up all big. So you can see it all nice and clear. So Antediluvium, the Order of Rising Stars. Our doom starts at 13. When a gate spawns that corresponds to the blue omen, spawn a cultist monster on that space. When the omen advances to a blue space, investigators as a group lose sanity equal to the amount of sanity on the sheet, which is six. Normally it's one per investigator, but thanks to our prelude, that's been boosted. Then we remove a sanity from it. When three mysteries have been solved, investigators win the game. When Doom advances to zero, flip the sheet and resolve the stars align effect on the back. Each night, the stars move closer to their ultimate alignment. Our starting mystery is Dread Countenance. The statuette was recovered from the smashed remains of a whaling vessel. There were no survivors. The shape of the statue's face is exotic and bizarre, yet something about it is oddly familiar. If you would gain an artifact, you may gain the grotesque statue artifact instead. At the end of the mythos phase, you may spend clues equal to the number of investigators and discard two spells and the grotesque statue artifact to solve this mystery. So we need four clues, the grotesque statue and two spells to be discarded. That's why we thought everyone should start with spells. And Dexter, whenever he gains a spell, he can get another one. Best off gaining spells in Arkham or Buenos Aires. And then a couple of new things just on the player raid, a couple of new actions that we can do. I think I was playing with Focus last time, even though I didn't technically have the expansion that included it. So you can spend an action to gain a Focus. You can have a maximum of two, and you can spend Focus to re-roll a die in the skill tests. Tony can use Focus to gain clues. And we can also gather resources as an action. You gain one resource for the action. You can have a maximum of two of them. And resources let you, when you are resting, you can spend resources to heal additional health or sanity. And when you are acquiring assets, you can spend resources to give you additional successes to get more expensive things or just more things. So a couple more options in our action phases, still limited to two actions and they've got to be different. So I think we're ready for some actions then. Sister Mary is our lead investigator and we're just going to go down the list from her. So to start off, I think she's going to do her special action. She is going to test her will and for every success, she can remove a madness condition from herself or anyone else in any space. And hey, I've come tooled up in the dice department as well. Although, I've got all these fancy Arkham Horror dice now. I mean, don't listen to Arkham dice, but I think I kind of prefer my purple ones. It'll be nice for all in Elder Signs though, won't it? And hey, look at this. Feel like a right idiot. <laughs> but all this stuff. <laughs> right, we've got three successes. I've rolled five dice though. I don't know why I've done that. That would have been amazing though. She's got four, Will. Because I'm chatting, aren't I? Chatting breeze. Two, though, I'll live with. So let's see, your madness conditions affect various things. So the hallucinations doesn't really trigger. You can get rid of it if you rest. But you see this here, mythos cards can cause all of these effects to kick off. So when it does kick off, you test will. And if you fail, you've got to look at the other side. That's probably something bad. Mary can kind of, like, I hope she would be able to get a success out of four dice. Let's see, Dis Dexter's Despair 
triggering that would make him lose a sanity, which we're already losing a fair bit of that, so that's a contender. Hunger, similar, you'd have to test will. Daniel's got three. And amnesia is, again, test will. They all like require you to rest and then roll some dice to help get rid of them. I think we're going to go for... Tony's going to find it difficult to test will, so he's going to get rid of his amnesia. And Dexter, we don't want him losing any more sanity than he has to, so we're going to remove that with Sister Mary's special ability. And I think she's going to get right to a location and improve and try to improve an ability she has got a ship ticket so with the move action you move one space but you can move extra spaces by spending tickets so there are sea lines and train lines there's no way of moving extra uncharted spaces with tickets but she could by spending a ship ticket it's a bit early on but she could go one spend a ship ticket to get to rome and rome's special thing is the encounters there are likely to help you improve your will. It's already pretty great, but hey, it could be greater. So she spent that ship ticket. Dexter Drake is in Tokyo where you can defeat monsters. I think he's going to start out trying to acquire some assets. So for that, we check influence. He's only got two influence, but his mind's eye does let him re-roll one. So let's see what he can get. He's got one success. Roll another one. He's got just one success. Out here in the reserve, we've got the bank loan that's just always there. You can gain a debt condition to add two successes to your result here. But you can spend your successes to buy stuff from the reserve. We've got the protective amulet, would give you an extra will during combat. Seek the truth. Whenever you gain a clue during a research encounter, so a space that had a clue on it, spawn another clue, that would be nice. Then you may spend three clues and discard this card to advance the active mystery by one. Now this can mean loads of different things depending on what the mystery is. If your active mystery wants you to spend a number of clues, like this one does, then you can pop a clue on the card and that basically counts. The kind of a discount of one clue to actually do the thing. So that would be kind of nice. You could just keep it and not do the spend clues bit and just keep spawning more clues when you have found a clue. Uh, mineralogy research. After resolving a general encounter or an expedition encounter on a wilderness space, you can examine the area's soil by testing observation. Probably good for Tony. If you pass, gain two clues and discard this. Or you can get investment. And I think that's what Dexter's going for. So whenever the effect triggers, uh, your investment is paid off. You can discard this to gain a funding condition. I'll help him get more things in the future maybe and it just frees up some more things so we can see something new in the reserve and we have found an enchanted dagger plus two strength during combat encounters so i think dexter's going to stay in tokyo and he's going to get a train ticket as his second action next time i know he's not so geared up for combat but it's only a cultist they're kind of weak it would be nice to you know from what i remember expeditions there's a good chance of you finding artifacts there or you know we want to keep the gates closed it would be good to go over there daniela is having a bit more of a simple turn i think she's already in san francisco where she can improve her weak observation hopefully we don't know that that's going to happen but the good chance of it she is going to spend an action to gain a resource which can do up to two. And then she's going to do a special action. You may spend any number of resources to gain that number of clues. So she has got four clues already. And whenever she spends resources, they get popped on her personal story. That's a quarter of the resources she needs already done. Oh, actually, wouldn't it be better? Rewind, rewind. Rather than spending an action to get a resource, why doesn't she acquire assets? Because then she can gain a resource and she doesn't have to spend an action just gaining the resource. Genius. There's no point resting while she's got full everything. She'll acquire assets then. So her influence is three and she gets two successes. I think she'll go for Seek the Truth. Maybe she should go northwards and check out the research encounters. And then the Enchanted Dagger, just in case there's some combat involved up there. she get plus two to a strength. Already you can see me space for this stuff running out. To put the tokens maybe under the characters. And they get filled up. We've got Forbidden Secrets plus one will during combat encounters. When you resolve a will test in a combat encounter, you if you don't lose sanity, gain a clue. And a pocket watch. You cannot become delayed unless you choose to. So there we go. The same actions for Daniela, but I realised, you know, don't, don't waste one getting a resource when you can do other stuff. So Tony wants to get fighting, but the monster is quite a way away and Dexter's kind of thinking of heading over there. It's going to take two whole turns for Tony. Like even if he got a ship token this turn, he can move one too. You can only get travel tokens in cities, so he couldn't get one there. So he'd have to move there and then there. Yeah, it's going to be ages for him to try and get there. I think he'll acquire some assets. 
I miss having Charlie Kane just handing them out to everyone. He's just got two influence and he fails, but he will take a loan. So here's a debt condition. We don't know what the downside is yet, but we will eventually. So he's got two successes. He's going to get that mineralogy research. So he wants to have some kind of encounter on a wilderness space. That's going to be possible, I think. And then, yeah, you cannot become delayed unless you choose to. He'll have the pocket watch. That's getting replaced with charter flight. Oh, we would have had that. When you gain this card, immediately move up to two spaces and then discard it. And mission briefing. Very cheap cards coming out so far, aren't they? When you gain this card, immediately gain two task unique assets and then discard one. Ooh, could be nice. Well, we don't know what the tasks would be, but do you know what? He's got this mineralogy research. He's going to do some soil examination, I think. He's going to go. This might not help him fight things. Well, we'll have to see where the monsters come out. He's going to go into the Amazon to have a wilderness encounter in there. Okay, we've had our action phase. It's time to move on to the encounter phase. Starting with Sister Mary, who I believe to be in Rome. A man with an eye patch invites you to join the ranks of the Custus Notiitae. He warns you beforehand that the sect's hidden knowledge comes at a terrible cost. You may gain a dark pact condition to improve will and another skill of your choice. I feel like dark pacts, didn't they cause... Was it Jim Culver? To be devoured? Still, Sister Mary is attracted by this offer. She's going to improve her will. And what else? Her influence isn't that great. She's going to improve that as well. Dexter Drake is over in Tokyo. So yeah, not the best. But hey, maybe he'll defeat some monsters. You never quite know what's going to happen. A politician sees your courage in his dreams and offers to help. Gain a random service asset from the deck. And he's got intelligence report. That's quite nice. When you gain this card, immediately gain two clues and discard it. Well, didn't that work out well? We're not finished though. He teaches you to invoke the Baku, a beast that eats nightmares. You may discard any number of possessions to cause a monster of your choice on any space to lose an equal amount of hell. His arcane assistant helps Helps him do spells. I mean, his investment, he only just got. We do want it to pay off. It could kill the cultist. You know, cultists, they're very weak and kind of ineffectual in a way. But also, when their reckoning effect triggers, they put a sanity on the ancient one sheet. I think he's going to lose this investment. We're never going to find out what his funding condition was. Maybe they're all the same. I don't remember. He's discarded one asset. He can cause the cultist to lose one health. And the cultist's information is actually on the ancient one sheet. They've got one health. So that is going to defeat the cultist. And it goes back in the bag. Could be encountering that cultist again. The bag is so blank. <laughs> well, it's not like full to the top, but yeah, there is a lot in here now. Daniela is in San Fran. You ask Captain Nathaniel Timmons if he knows any local legends. He grins and says, Aye. Timmons then tells you several stories about monstrous beings and teaches you a few tricks to help you survive against such horrors. Gain a talent condition. And that's going to be resilient. Once per round when you would lose... Oh, so it's similar to a headstrong, actually. Once per round when you would lose health, you may test strength. If you pass, prevent the loss of up to two health. Headstrong is when you would lose sanity, test will. And if you pass, prevent the loss of up to two sanity. And then flip the card in either case. Two pretty nice things so far, I think. Tony is in the Amazon and will be having a generic encounter. You search through a series of labyrinthine tunnels to find a legendary lost treasure. Test observation minus one. Tony's observation is pretty impressive, though. That's still going to be three dice. He's got no focus, so hopefully he manages this. And, oh, look at that. Two successes. You discover it within a subterranean chamber. Gain an artifact. He's found the artifact right off the bat. So he can gain an artifact as normal, just a random one from the deck. Or because of our mystery, whenever you would gain an artifact, you can gain the grotesque statue instead. I think he's going to go for it. It will still do something. It's the grotesque statue. When you gain this card from the deck, gain five clues. Wow. Once per round, you may spend a clue to prevent all sanity loss from a single effect. That could be Antediluvium's effect. Make sure he's got a good stock of clues. I mean, like, yeah, like, so many of these things I've never seen. I think that might have been in the base game. There's no symbol on it. Maybe I have seen it and I don't remember, though. Hey, it's impressive. Otherwise, he would have impaired his strength if he'd failed that. Good job, Tony. I like Tony Morgan. He's on the face of it. He seems kind of generic. I think because he's just man in overcoat with guns. I really like him in the card game as well. I haven't been him, but Rachel's been him. Putting bounties on people. That's not all, though, because he's just 
resolved a general encounter on a wilderness space, so he's going to examine the area's soil. That's just a normal observation check, so he's got all of his dice, and nothing happens if it goes wrong, actually. He's passed. Gain two clues and discard this card. I mean, Tony can pretty much, until we've solved this mystery and we lose the grotesque statue, Tony can pretty much prevent Antediluvium's ability. I mean, we don't want to string the game out to the point where there's no more sanity on that sheet because I think other things will have killed us by then. But what an encounter phase to start us off. The devout sister Mary has been tempted by a dark pact to improve her willpower and influence. Dexter Drake found a load of clues and threw away his soon to pay off investments to defeat a cultist. Daniela became resilient in San Francisco and Tony got all of the clues in the world basically and the statue we need for the mystery. As first rounds go, it's pretty nice. So we've had the encounter phase, now it's time for the mythos phase. So I have used something else for this as well. Basically, there's a great thread. If you Google on the Board Game Geek forums, uh, there's extremely helpful apps for setup and gameplay by Robert. It'll link you to the Arkham Card Clock. It'll link you to the Mythos Companion, which is another website that helps you set up a Mythos deck. There are a million cards now. You can do it all on there. It's got pictures of all the Mythos cards. You don't actually have to have them in front of you. And it will actually time your game and give you a score for it at the end. I have used it to set up a game and I just drew all of the cards without looking at them, just looked at their names. And there are many, many setups for the difficulties. So what I've chosen here is a tiered difficulty. There are three kind of difficulties of cards in the Mythos deck. There are easy ones with Frost, there are normal ones with nothing, and there are hard ones with tentacles. So we'll see how this goes. Maybe just shoving them all in randomly is fine, but I've gone for the tiered one. So the, the stage one encounters we're gonna get are easy. Stage two, normal. Stage three are going to be the hard ones that will really make life hard for us. So we start out with drawn through the gate. The nature of these holes in reality has changed. No longer just doorways, otherworldly energies are flooding into our world. These forces are reaching out to everything nearby and pulling it all into the swirling void that exists between dimensions. When a gate spawns, each investigator on that space is lost in time and space. As an encounter, an investigator on Buenos Aires may work with the scientists at the university to return the trapped citizens to the real world. So it's a law check. If they pass, they may spend clues equal to half the number of investigators to solve this rumour. Tony has got clues. He's right next to Buenos Aires. He has only got two law. That's the only thing. And it would be his encounter to likely fail that. So we need an exclamation mark in Buenos Aires to remind us that that's there. And we also spawn clues. Yeah, do that. Do it in this order. Do the icons in this order. Spawn clues, then pop the thing in Buenos Aires. So at four players, we spawn two clues. So I don't look randomly through me. You know, it's the sheer amount of tokens and trays I now need. So we have got Istanbul. I have to watch out as well because everything's mixed in. There are a load of tokens in there for the various sideboards. So if I end up drawing one of them, same as the gates, I just discard it and do another one. So yeah, Plateau of Leng. We haven't got that unless you've got the, I think it's the Mountains of Madness board, the Antarctic board. Number four, we've got that. And it's quite close to Daniela, although she wouldn't be able to skip there. So yeah, the first, you can't use the second step. There's no ticket for the uncharted tracks and there we go that is our first round i feel like that is a pretty good start let's carry on so a new round sister mary is gonna do her action again there's still two people isn't there with madness conditions testing her will which is now five don't improve your skills anymore that's all the dice i've got three successes so she can get rid of her own hallucinations and Daniela's hunger. And then do you know what? She's very tempted by what's going on in London. These mystic ruins. She's going to go over to London. Just move another space. Dexter, he's got his train ticket. He can get to Tunguska. Does he want to do anything else while he's here? Do you know what? I think if he's going into a gate, he might just want some focus. Thinking he would like to acquire assets. He'd like to get some more things, help him with combat, maybe. You know, if he acquired the charter flight, he could just move to Tunguska and not have to spend his ticket and then he's got it for something else do you know what he could abandon going to the open gate use his two space movements to get one two to san francisco and then use his normal move and train ticket to get to arkham where he can get spells so basically he wants to gain spells and do spells he wants to do law checks doesn't he on spells to complete his story we do want to win the game beyond that he could make his way there in future he's going to get a focus now and he's going to move using his train ticket one extra space to go up 
and across to Tunguska. And he could stay here next time and try the expedition if he wants. I think he's going to go into the gate this turn. Daniela is tempting to stay in San Francisco. She hasn't improved her observation yet. And there's still a chance of that happening. She did want to go to research encounters, but that is two spaces away. She could get a charter flight there. I think she's going to stay in San Francisco another turn. So she might as well test her influence and try and get some stuff. She fails, so she could just discard something to refresh the display. Or she can take a loan. She'll take a loan. It's early, we're not all in tatters yet, so she's happy to get a loan. She's going to get this mission briefing. So upon gaining this card, immediately gain two task unique assets and then discard one and this card. So she has the choice of genealogy research. When you defeat a monster with toughness two or more in a combat encounter, you may examine the creature's remains observation. This would be perfect for Tony. If you pass, gain two clues. Or when you perform a focus action, you can consult experts to train you or will check. If you pass, discard this card and improve a skill of your choice. She'll take the uh, specialized training. And then she's got... Another point, I think she doesn't want to spend the charter flight because you have to immediately move and discard the card. If she could keep it, she'd buy that. But she's going to have the protective amulet uh, where we have officially run out of space for Daniela's things. They are replaced by bodyguard. Gain plus one strength. Reduce the damage of monsters you encounter by one to a minimum of one. And mystic scroll. You may reroll a die when resolving a law test be good for Dexter to get, wouldn't it? Oh, Daniela should gain a resource, shouldn't she? Oh, and she's only done one action. She could gain another resource. Yeah. If she's staying here anyway, she's going to gain a resource. And then next turn, she can spend two again towards her eight. Tony is going to make his way to Buenos Aires. And yeah, he'll try and handle the event. He's not so good. So his encounter is replaced by the drawn through the gate encounter. He's got another action though, so he could test influence. He could try and get other things as well. Oh, what about the Mystic's roll? Reroll a die. He's about to have a, a check. Yeah, he will um, test his influence, which is just two. Come on, Tony, you've already got a debt. Be influential. Okay, that didn't go well. He's not been influential enough. He won't discard anything. I kind of like those things. Unfortunate, Tony. It doesn't bode well for his uh, big check in a minute, does it? So, encounter phase. So, Sister Mary is in London, but she is not having the normal encounter. She is going to have a Mystic Ruins encounter. Stonehenge. Long before these stones were used by the servants of Yog sothoth they were part of a larger structure built by the Elder Things to trap creatures from other worlds. You try to contact any being still imprisoned here. So that's going to be a law minus one check, which is just one die. And she gets, oh, it's off screen, but it was a three. Something invades your thoughts. You try to talk to this alien mind. Influence check. Hey, she improved influence. Come on, Mary. And she succeeds. You convince the alien to help. You may move the omen counterclockwise by one without advancing doom. So that is actually very nice because it's only when the omen advances onto a space that's got the Eldritch token that we lose all of the sanity. So this has effectively gained us a movement because we're going counterclockwise onto that space. We don't advance doom. Normally you would advance doom for every gate with that symbol that's open. But that's very nice. Well done, Sister Mary. And the next Mystic Ruins is at number 21 over there in Australia. Dexter Drake is in Tunguska. And I think he's diving into that gate, isn't he? He's having an otherworld encounter. The future. A future version of you lies in a rancid hotel room, slowly dying of vicious wounds while mumbling incoherently. You try to speak to this other you, but it is diff but it is difficult to face that this is your ultimate fate. Will check. Dexter's will is three. Nothing uh, to help him with that, I think. Uh, he succeeds. The other you points to a letter that describes how to seal the portal. Close this gate. Well done, Dexter. The letter also contains an ancient rite. So that's going to be a law check, which Dexter is fairly good at. He's got four dice for that. Go on, Dex. He succeeds. You perform the rite correctly. Gain a spell. Oh, and remember, whenever Dexter gains a spell, he may gain an additional spell. He's going to do it. He's found Storm of Spirits. So when resolving combat, he can do a law check instead of a strength check. And Rack, in combat, he can test Law minus one. If you pass, you gain five strength. So two 
good combat spells, so it seems like everyone wants a fight in order to try and get their stories done. Daniela is still in San Francisco where some kind of enormous hexagon has appeared. You try to earn the trust of the local director of New World Incorporated. Influence check. Three dice on the influence. Has she got anything that helps? I don't think so. And that is going to be a fail. She hasn't got a focus, has she? He turns the world against you. Lose a sanity and gain a pursuit condition. So she could test Will to try and prevent that sanity loss. Failed. So, uh, oh no, then flip this card. She failed. What's her headstrong condition going to say? This time is different. You have been shaken and now you are afraid. If you rolled any ones, discard this card. I've picked the dice up. I don't think she rolled any ones, so I think she's got it. But yeah, she failed all of her stuff and she's got a pursuit condition. Oh no, Daniela is now wanted and <laughs> gets another card next to her. You cannot perform acquire assets actions. When you perform a travel action, roll a die on a four, five or six, discard this card. That's not good, is it? Tony, we know, is in Buenos Aires where another sighting of the giant hex has appeared. He is doing the test that is on the drawn through the gate card. So an investigator on Buenos Aires may work with the scientists at the university to return the trapped citizens to the real world. Law check. Come on, Tony. We've had too many fails this round. There we go. Who needs big stats when you've got a brown coat? He may spend clues equal to half the number of investigators, so two of his enormous stack of clues to solve this rumour. So, yeah, it's, if someone had been on a space container gate, they would get lost in time and space, which is never a nice thing, is it? Tony, actually... If he stays here and gets a spell, at the end of the Mythos phase, you can spend clues equal to the number of investigators, discard two spells, and the artifact. He could do it pretty soon. We've all had our encounters. It's time for the Mythos phase, which is going to be safe haven. It has been months since you have known a home-cooked meal or the warmth of congenial conversation. Time is of the essence, but you cannot deny the restorative value of a few days spent resting and recovering. So we advance Doom, so we advance the Omen, and then for every gate that's open with that symbol on it, green, we would advance Doom by one. We actually just closed that gate, so we're okay. Then Reckoning Effects, oh dear. Gonna be a lot of those, so there's no monsters or anything. We do them in the order of Monsters, then the Ancient One, then Mythos Cards, then Possessions, then Conditions. So there are no monsters, there's nothing on the Ancient One, so let's work down our investigators. Possessions, no. Dexter's Mind's Eye, Test Law and flip this card. So he's got four law, but when he is when he's performing a law test as part of a spell effect, which is this a spell effect? I'm going to say it is. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Come on. There we go. So test law and flip this card. This is what gives him rerolls on influence and will test. Did I miss a reroll for him when he was trying to get that mystic scroll? Maybe I did. Uh, so he got two successes. Your mind has been pushed past its breaking point. Gain a madness condition. And it's despair again. I don't think it triggers in the same turn that you get it, though. More possessions. No, they're conditions. They're conditions. So now we can move on to conditions. And we're about to find out, I think, what Sister Mary's Dark Pact was. Roll the die on a one. It is time to fulfill your part of the bargain. Come on, Sister Mary. Not a one. It's a two. So no, we are not going to find out. Dexter's Despair, he only just gained it. Daniela has. Let's see, debt. Some men have come to collect on your debt. Flip this card. Bagman. A man surprises you in your hotel room and presses you for information. You fear that if you do not tell him what he wants to know, you'll never be heard from again. You may spend a clue if you do not move to a random space and become delayed. She's got four clues. She will spend... A clue. And in a wanted condition, test observation, which she still hasn't managed to improve, has she? She's got no focus or anything. Well, she can spend clues to reroll, can't she? But who wants to spend clues? She succeeds! So we don't flip the wanted. She's still got that status, but she can travel and she's got a 50-50 chance of uh, losing it. And then Tony has a debt as well. Tony's debt. Local authorities. Someone was asking about you, says a fellow traveller. They said you owe quite a bit of money. Naturally, I said that I didn't want to know anything, but you may want to find your way to a new town soon. You attempt to hide from the police. Observation check. That's going to be four. And, oh dear. So he's failed. Uh, move to the nearest city space. He's in a city. 
and gain a detained condition unless you discard an ally. He hasn't got an ally, so he has been detained. You cannot move or perform actions other than the action on this card. Instead of resolving an encounter, flip this card. So it's testing influence if you pass, discard it. Ouch. I think that is all of our many, many conditions, though. And so that's all the reckoning effects. Then a gate spawns. One gate at four players. Well, this is quite good for Tony, actually. The gate spawns in the Amazon. And a monster emerges. Tony wants to defeat five or more of these before he gets to one health or sanity. And it's going to be Amigo. They're pretty, they're pretty tough customers. Pretty tasty. You do get an artifact if you defeat them, though. So there's Amigo in the Amazon. And then the event. Each investigator may become delayed to discard a non-deal condition. So remember, like, Tony cannot become delayed unless you choose to. So he can choose to become delayed. It's, he doesn't get to ignore it. I know that normally you would lie down your standee, but for bird's eye purposes, everyone is lying down. Tony's going to decide to do that. I'm going to use exclamation marks to remind me that there. So he would miss, he would miss both of his actions. He was going to go there anyway to gain spells, but there's a chance that he would still get an action. I suppose he might never get rid of this and then he wouldn't have the encounter there. Do you know what? There's a risk that he might end up failing that and having to do this as his encounter rather than gaining a spell. And then at the end of the next mythos phase, he would have all of the stuff. If he gains a spell next time, he's got the statue, he's got the clues, he's got two spells. He would be able to do the mystery. So he's going to become delayed, skipping his next action phase to get rid of a non-deal condition. So detained is gone. And unfortunately... Sister Mary's Dark Pact is a deal condition, so she can't become delayed to get rid of that. Dexter could get rid of his Despair, or is he in Tunguska? He could go on the expedition. Yeah, do you know what? He'll become delayed as well. Get rid of that Despair. So it's a bit of a waste, Sister Mary, using a whole action for it just to get rid of one. That's the end of the Mythos phase. We haven't got quite enough to do the mystery just yet. Just one spell short for Tony. But he is in Buenos Aires where he can gain ritual spells. So there we go. That is our big introductions and the first two rounds of our new game of Eldritch Horror. I hope you enjoyed that and that you'll join me for part two. Tony's solving mysteries, even though he's just seen a great big monster appear in the Amazon. He wants to go and find that. Is Daniela going to charter a flight and go and do a research encounter? Or is she still going to desperately try and improve her observation in San Francisco? Sister Mary's close to a research encounter as well. We could be getting clues. And Dexter's off on an expedition, I think, in a minute. Oh, he has. He's done a spell test, hasn't he? He's done a law check, which he passed. So I'm going to pop an Eldritch token on his card. If you would like to help me keep making more stuff, there are links to Patreon and Kofi in the description. Thanks so much for watching this. If you'd like to see more Eldritch Horror in the meantime, and you haven't seen them already, I have done two previous playthroughs of this with all different investigators, different ancient ones each time, but it just didn't have a load of expansions back then. Thank you for being with me now, though, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye, everyone. <laughs>